Hello guys, I'm still sick, but I figured I would go over this simple thing real quick. Uh, Alright, let's talk about smoothing groups and fixing your normals and some little tricks you can do to optimize your objects. Before you start any project, you should always consider how is this object going to be used and how is this object going to be viewed. Currently, I've already gone through the hassle of setting up a few pipe-like objects to give you an idea of ways that you can optimize. So, if our viewers are viewing it or using our items like this, you could tell that that's a line, and that's a square, and that's a square, and that's a hexagon, and this is a stop sign, and so forth. But if these cylinders are going to be used as pillars for instance like this and you leave it like this in flat mode which is what when you first load the primitive in blender using any one of these your shading is in flat mode what that means is every individual face is flat and every vertex and line or edge is in sharp mode which means even though you have a nice pretty texture on here anybody using your object is going to see these hard edges and so even though you're trying to make a using by using more faces say 32 in a circle which is the default for the cylinder 32 even though it's a smooth circle because of how many faces it has they're still going to see all 64 individual edges so you need to fix that before you export over to Planet Coaster and just because you can use 32 doesn't mean you should if your object is only going to be viewed from this angle you don't need to use 34 faces to make a cylinder look like a cylinder. You can go down and use a hexagon or use a box. In the last tutorial when I made the swing we used a box. And because our object was being viewed mostly from the side and the top, but the, co but the top had a cover on it, our users were not going to see the bottom so they couldn't tell that it was a, a box that was being used. And we, u we manipulated their eyes by using this groups, which is controlling our normals, auto smooth, and with the object selected in edit mode, we selected all of the edges and over here in shading and UVs we clicked on smooth for edges and what that did and I've already done it for every single one of these objects is that made it so if you're viewing these objects like this you can see that this is a this was a box this was a box this is a hexagon this is the stop sign and this is the other one and you really can't tell the difference between those objects with smoothing groups applied to them they all look like cylinders if you're making something really small there's no reason why you need to make a box to do that to optimize your object you can use planes depending on how that object is going to be viewed so if it's going to be mostly viewed from side to side then you can use the straight up and down planes like so and once it's rendered in game when they're spinning back and forth they'll see it like that but if the object is say going to be viewed from the top down or bottom up then you can spin your planes like this and as they're moving around they'll render either side so you just saved yourself four, four polygons by only using planes in that instance on a super small object <coughs> 
And if you're going to go a little bigger, you can get away with using boxes in these very in these sizes. A little bigger than that, go with a hexagon or a stop sign. And then when you get really big, then you can go into this this general shape. But this is also assuming that the people using it are viewing it from these angles like this or like this. Say it's this was on the side of a wall up high and it, the object isn't intended for them to see the edges here or the face edges. So this way we can manipulate their eyes to make them think that they're looking at a cylinder even though we're using the minimum amount of edges mm, faces. So the way to correctly use smoothing groups on these is you select each edge in between, go all the way around and then smooth it and then once that's done on the top here you want to shift alt and select the entire outside edge and make sure that those edges are sharp and what that'll do is that'll control the shading between the two because you want this to be smooth and this to have a hard edge so this up here stays flat because it's flat so this will look like a cylinder and this will be a flat top and that will stop any weird shading you might see when you're doing smoothing <coughs> and over here you would turn auto smooth on and for a cylinder you usually use about 180 um, other dimensions you can play around with depending on how complicated your object is is 45, 90, and 180 are good ones for cylinders, but you can play with this angle until you find something that works for your object. It doesn't have to be 180, it doesn't have to be 45, you can just keep playing with it until you find something that looks good for your object. Now if the object is being viewed from this direction, If the object is being from this direction, then you want to decide what looks best to you. So in this instance, for our first LOD, we would use a 32-sided object because this right here is the focal point. This is what we want them to see. But the thing to note is all objects have bevels. And that's the difference between making your object look realistic and look fake. So, I'm going to throw this into edit mode so you can see the bevel in action. So, this is the main tread of the tire, for instance. And then this is where the bevel is. And when you're beveling, your hard edge you want to be right here between the tread and the start of the bevel. And then the, the rest of this is all smooth, and your tread here is smooth. But your hard edge is between the bevel and the tread. 
And when you're done with that, you get a nice natural looking edge on your tire. And this one right here, say we, you know, extruded our vertices and made it look like this on this nicer block. Okay, well this is going to be LO. By L3 your object should look like this. <clears throat> and for L5 it should be flat and a hexagon. That would be the best way to optimize going from here to here and then over to that. That way you don't have, because if you use decimate with this you're gonna have some jagged edges and it's gonna look really ugly as your viewers get further and further away from the object so when it comes to this kind of object you're gonna wanna do it manually and not with decimate uh. okay so here I've loaded up some boxes. This is a standard primitive box that you load into the game. Er, <clears throat> that you load into Blender, okay? It's a box, we know it's a box, but here's the thing. This box is unnatural. Even if you got a toy that was made into a box, it's going to have a bevel on the edge. All things that are square or seem to have 90 degree angles don't actually have 90 degree angles they have bevels on them even a 2x4 that's been laser cut at the sawmill has a bevel on it so once you apply your smoothing group to it in edit mode shading grab everything smooth it it's gonna look like that you're gonna turn auto smooth on and see with 90 selected it gives us a pretty good pretty good setup so we didn't have to use um, 180 because with this we actually want it to be a box so we're only going to use a 90 degree angle for smoothing because we do want those edges to be shown however this box doesn't look natural so what we have to do is we have to go over <clears throat> we have to add some loop cuts and drag them over and do that for every single side and what you get is a shape that looks like this so these fa after we did our our loop cuts which are these extra lines here and here here and here we grabbed these faces and pulled them out on each side and that gave us a bevel the smaller you make this bevel the more realistic your box is going to look but for demonstration pur purposes I did this really quick now these points right here are going to be sharp so you'll have to grab those and scale it in a bit to give it a more rounder edge but once you're done with that and you go back into object mode now this cube looks more natural and realistic so a very common mistake that you see throughout modeling when you're beginning is you think all objects have hard edges and that's not the case if you actually go around your house and look at everything you thought was a hard edge you'll actually notice that it has a beveled edge or a, a rounded over edge so those are just little things that can help you make your objects look better and those are different ways to use smoothing groups which just to remind you you have to be in edit mode and you have to go over here to shading UVs and here's where you're going to select because by default all of your edges and all of your vertices are in sharp mode and all of your faces are in flat mode so to get them to have round edges you're going to have to grab them the ones that you want to change or if it's the whole thing go into face mode and push A to select all and then smooth every single one of them and then you go over here to your vis groups 
turn on auto smooth and change this value to one that you're happy with. Anything you do in the UI as far as um, changing your normals or changing your uh, vis groups and shading will be directly reflected in Planet Coaster. So keep that in mind. So like right now this box over here in the middle that just has standard shading applied to it is going to look like that in the game. This one that's flat is going to look like that in game. And this one over here that has the beveled edges with smoothing applied is going to look like that in game. So keep that in mind. So this one in the middle I would not use in game because you can't really tell what it is because everything is smooth and there's no edges to depict what it is. This one with the bevels, it doesn't have edges either, but it has bevels. And those bevels define the edge. And that's what helps it look more realistic. And then this one, just by default, because everything is flat, you can tell what the hard edge is. But you guys can experiment with your objects to figure out which works for you. The hard edge or the beveled edge. <coughs> but with cylinders, you're definitely going to want to try to optimize your object as best you can by using boxes and octagons or hexagons instead of going the full-fledged 32 face object. Alright, alright. So that's it for this one. Um, I'll give you some examples to show you how I used the shading tool to manipulate my objects in some projects that will be coming to my shop soon. Okay, so one item we I know we've been needing for a while is some umbrellas that are folded down. Uh, so for this item, I'm using smoothing groups because I want the outer edges here, these hard edges, to look like it's smooth over because it's, you know, a material. It's, But I do want to preserve the hard edge inside the fold so you actually know that this object is folded. So to do that, I made my hard edges inside all the way around. And uh, so the shading and shadowing doesn't look weird. I put um, a hard edge on the bottom ends and also on the top ends. And then for the top cap piece, I want my hard edge to be here and here. And this is that uh, little rubber material that's on the top of most of these umbrellas. It prevents the wear and tear of the opening and closing of the umbrella. So there's a hard edge here and a hard edge here. Mm. And then that, when it's folded down, does this kind of action. So this right here is actually a smooth edge. But because this object more than likely will be viewed mostly from far away, and that is small, <coughs> it kind of creates this this hard edge here, but I'm not really worried about it. I could add more vertices to it and smooth it out and give it a beveled edge, but I don't really need to for this object, so. And as you can see, my smoothing groups for this object is 120, because that's what looks good for this particular object. And then down here at the bottom of the pole is also a hard edge. Alright, so this is another big project that's coming, and as you can see, it's fairly complicated. I got a lot of little things over here on the side. Uh, so I took a measurement of Planet Coaster characters, the peeps. And I took a look a, took a look at Ollie's tubes and compared them with the peeps and the dimensions for that object, the tubes, is 
within reason of the size of the peeps. So I use that as a starting parameter and use Pixelated's measuring tool to measure them. And I came up with this basically um, 2 meter by 2 meter square is going to be the size for a tube that holds four people. And this one I've already applied the smoothing group to, but you can see how the shadowing is weird, and that's because I haven't finished applying all of my smoothing groups to it yet, and the reason why I haven't is because I wanted to show you. When you look at an actual tube, it has, right here, a seam, and inside the middle, a seam, where the two pieces of plastic or rubber or whatever material they decide to make the tube out of, where it's glued together. So that would be a hard edge. So while the rest of the inflatable is smooth, that part of the tube should be a hard edge. So I would select with Shift-Alt, and then I would go over here to my shading and make sure that that edge is sharp. And then inside here, would also be glued together. So I'm Shift-Alting and selecting all of my edge in edge mode, and making these edges sharp as well. Now that that's selected, when I go back into object mode and look, now my shading has corrected itself because there's a hard edge for it to bounce, figure out how that's going to actually be shaded and manipulated from those hard edges between. So maybe I decided that 90 isn't going to work for me and I go 180 which is our typical for spheres. And see it did nothing because <coughs> it's only half a sphere and not a full sphere. So that's why for this one 90 works just fine. I can even lower it if I wanted to, and you can see how it starts to get rough. So now it looks almost completely unnatural. So for this one, 90 works well. And then for this particular project, when I UV map it, I'm going to UV map the whole top and the whole bottom as my UV and overlap them so when I texture one one side it'll apply it to the bottom as well and then I did the handle separately because I'm going to, mo to UV map one side and then UV map the other side and put them over the top of each other so I only have to color one side and do that for the whole thing rather than taking this object and making it part of this object so, to smooth this, these guys, the handles, so my hard edge for this one is around the base of the handle, and right here along the outer edge is a hard edge, and at the bottom, is also a hard edge so this comes out looking great and then the bottom of that particular model isn't going to be seen by anybody so I cut those out and deleted them because I don't need them because they're not going to be seen and then you're probably wondering what the red line is on here this right here is the seam so in UVs right all this information is shading and then down here in UVs, you have unwrap, mark seam, and clear seam. Okay, so when you're UV mapping, if you mark your seams, which is this red line, when you go to unwrap, it, Blender will take this information between the seams and make that flat. So if I were to... Well, I'm not going to go into UV mapping, but that's what the red lines are. The red lines have nothing to do with vis grouping or shading and everything to do with UV mapping. So, 
Now I'm going to turn this off. And turn this on. Okay, so I've started to develop a new ride, water slide ride, for these large tubes. And I may or may not finish this project, but the whole point of this is I want to make a few of those tornado style water slide rides. But to do that, I need a track first that holds the tubes. So I'll be making the tubes first, and then eventually I'll be making the sections for the tornado and uh, the other one that's, you know, basically a toilet bowl. You know, where you just come around and spin and spin and spin and then fall out. Yeah. I'll probably be doing that in the future, but don't expect it to come out anytime soon because it's a lot of work. <sighs> okay, so after I pretty much modeled out the straight track already, I mean, it's pretty much in the done state as far as the modeling aspect goes. Uh, I looked at many, many different uh, theme parks and the way that they do their large um, tubes, and the ones that are using the circular tubes, theirs is a full-on pipe, and the ones that, uh, let you do the four-man one, like what I made here, this one, or, like always, the single or the double, their pipes are flat on the bottom, so... And then even the ones that use a larger straight-in raft are flat on the bottom. So that's why my pipe is shaped like this. But I will probably do variations of the full pipe and the flat pipe. But like I said, it's a huge project, so don't expect that to come out anytime soon. <clears throat> Alright, so on this one, <clears throat> the outer edges here and... The reinforcement pieces here and here all need to be hard edges. But the inner tube tubing piece here and over here need to be smooth. So with the track selected, auto smooth turned on, and we know that cylinders use 180, it comes out to looking like this. But I can get away with 30 in this instance and it gives me this hard bevel right here this hard edge which is fine because it goes cylinder and then flat but if I don't want that there then I can just increase this until it disappears and 45 works perfect for this <coughs> so oh, it, it's a very tedious thing but that's how you would go about it, and then in edit mode you can see where <clears throat> without any hard edges applied currently it's kinda hard to tell the difference between this edge and the smoothness here on here it's easy because like I said prior when you make an object based off of a primitive, by default, all of your edges are flat, sharp, and sharp. So all I had to do was go back and select the edges that I wanted to be smooth. But if I want to make sure that the shadowing doesn't make it look like this edge is invisible, then I'm going to go back make sure I'm in edge select shift alt to select the loops and make sure that those edges are sharp and by doing that now you can actually tell that there's edges there they're very distinctive Now, I haven't fully decided if I want to mess with this yet or not, so, I mean, it's... It, this, this project is very whip still. 
I may actually smooth that out some more. Or I might leave it. I haven't fully decided on that yet, but yeah. So that's just a few examples of how you use the the auto smooth and how you manipulate your angles on your normals and how you would go about editing your object from flat to smooth using faces, edges, and verticals. Uh, the two that you'll mostly use is faces and edges. It's rare that you'll ever use verticals. Um, verticals is more or less for something like making rocks or plants where you have very spiky sharp objects then that's when you would smooth and sharpen your verticals but for the most part you'll be using your faces and edges for most of your projects when it comes to smoothing <sighs> alright guys that's enough for today <sighs> if you have any questions you know that you can find me in PCTM thanks have a great day bye